our third annual Social Innovation Youth Summit. For the third year in a row, it's co-hosted with the United Nations, UNFPA. We have her around here, you'll be able to hear her. It is uh, done in support of the Compact for Young People in Humanitarian Action. It's a UN-led policy-making group that Goodler is part of, and the UNFPA is the one of the agencies that is leading it. And we are here to promote sustainable development goals and promote um, uh, humanitarian action where young people lead the action. So attending events like that can give you a lot of insights how to approach what you do in life in uh, through the lens of uh, global issues and how you can connect the projects that you have in your own neighborhood, very small and projects in your schools and your neighborhoods, how can you tie them in with the global goals? You can start thinking of how you can use the information that we, you will hear uh, for projects. What kind of projects can you start in your school, in your neighborhood? and that can potentially lead you to something bigger and greater. And the theme of this, this year is start with the why. And um, I'll ask you a question. What does start with the why means to you? Yeah. I think so start with the why means like, why would you do it and why is it good? Yeah, that, that's perfect. Social impact space, right? Why would you do it and why is it good? Why you think it's good? <laughs> what you're starting to do? Anybody else? Any other ideas in the audience? Yeah, here. It's like questioning something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're wondering what it is or something. Yes, yes, perfect. Questioning something. Actually, the, the two younger, on the younger side of our audience, they, they are absolutely right. Um, a lot of us start social innovation projects, social impact projects, just because it, I, the idea of doing something great sounds, sounds really appealing. And we walk around and we, all of a sudden we see the need and we jump into, um, into doing it without really thinking about it, without really asking a question why. First of all, why am I interested in this particular subject? Why am I interested in this particular idea? And then why the things the way they are is even a bigger question. To start doing the research, and you know, not many people actually like to do research, especially those of you who like to do things. They, you might think that it's boring and it's not worth your time. Um, but asking the questions why the things the way they are right now, it's a good place to start. And the second, uh, second question to ask why it hasn't been solved up to this point. There must be a reason. There are like a lot of smart people working on all sorts of different issues. You know, take the United Nations. So you, Iran will tell you everything that UNFPA is working on, and you'll be—I'm sure—you'll be amazed and impressed. But asking asking yourself why is this issue hasn't been solved, why it exists, and why it hasn't been solved is the great place to start if you wanted to bring any kind of social change in the world. Without that, you'll be running around. And um, in fact, a lot of times you might do more harm than good. And I would say that it used to be much easier to be a high school student. To get into good college, all you needed to do is to have good grades. There was a time like that. Imagine, you just needed to be a good student. That's it. Then the time, the competition, and college is starting to see that a lot more people were one, you know, had a good grades. So it was not enough anymore and uh, students started to volunteer. And it was, it was still not, any, not a problem for the world, for the global space, because you would go to a nonprofit, and a lot of times it was a, uh, it was a shelter, animal shelter, and you would uh, walk the dogs, you would foster the dog, and then on your college application, 
um, you would write that I actually volunteer for these organizations of food bank or um, women's shelter or something like that, then you actually work under supervision of people who are deeply into the issue and you are just helping them. They're also, uh, they're another part of you were good student, a good athlete. So athletic abilities were able to get you into a good college. So started all started with good grades, then added athletic abilities, everybody was in sports, and then added volunteering. It's no longer enough. And uh, we see that we work, uh, Goodler Foundation works with a lot of youth, and we see that now you have to take it a step further. And I would say that we work with a lot of Bay Area, Peninsula, Silicon Valley youth. Half of them have no, their own nonprofits. And that's where the, the danger comes. That in uh, pursuit of a great project that can, that can make you a superstar on a paper so that you can be accepted into a good college, a lot of times students don't think past, um, past the question why. The first question why would be why am I doing why am I doing it? That's where they stuck. It doesn't matter. I'm doing it just to get into the college. But at this point, a lot of uh, youth is actually st starting to do a projects that are uh, bigger and broader and actually have beneficiaries that can be affected in negative ways. And uh, questioning your own projects uh, and doing more research about it becomes pretty essential. Now, how many of you have a nonprofit already? Okay, just few of you. Okay, how many of you have a project that is a social, social impact type of project? They actually going and solving some kind of problem in your own community or somewhere outside of your community? lot more. Yes, you might not have a, a non-profit status legally registered, but you, you know, half of this audience has actually a project. So that's, it. this is to you that I'll be talking about, and those of you who are thinking to start, you looked and half of the audience has a project, so the next thing is like, wow, I don't have a project, and you probably will be thinking about it. So to all of you, uh, please uh, listen to us, listen carefully today so that your, your project will actually can flourish and make a, a bring a change in the community you are in. Let me tell you a little bit uh, a history of Goodler. Some of you uh, were here in the last year and year before that, but many of you are new to Goodler. And Goodler is a technology platform. It started uh, just like a regular AI technology that connects local needs with local resources. The way we started the background, um, it's. Um, I'm a co-founder together with Tatiana Fedorovic, who, who is my co-founder, and we've done a lot of work with nonprofit organizations, and we found that a lot of times resources um, that were brought into the area of the need, and it was very inefficient. Let's say there was an orphanage in, in Russia, and they needed uh, shovels, and they said, we need shovels. So people from around the city of Moscow put together like 100,000 shovels and they were poor quality and they dumped them to that orphanage and they only needed 100. So now they have like 100,000 shovels and it, at that orphanage of poor quality. Um, the situation you think, oh, that's orphanage in Russia. The situation here, let's just take the uh, fires. There was a couple of years ago, we got a call from one of the uh, shelters for fire victims, the nearest shelter to Bay Area and San near Santa Rosa got 100,000 toothbrushes. People heard on the news that there was a fire and people ran out of their homes. And the first thing people thought of that they didn't have hygiene products. So they, they went to the stores, they bought toothbrushes, and they brought them to the nearest shelter. That sh shelter, mind you, only had 100 people in it. They were overwhelmed. And if you were one of those people who actually were packing their cars and taking it to, to the fireplaces, many of you, I'm sure, were actually turned around and you were pretty upset. 
I don't know, you're pretty young, but I know a lot of uh, our friends uh, who, who know what we do. Instead of checking with us, they actually collected a lot of goods put it in their trunks and drove there. And uh, what a disaster that was for them when they were turned around and said that there was no um, no place to put this, all this stuff there. Their resources are very limited, human resources are very limited to even handle this. Um, so that's where Goodler fits in. It's uh, We connect local needs with local resources. And as we speak about local resources, This is the actual app, how it looks like. Goodler, by the way, it's a goodler.com, and goodler is double D. So G-O-O-D-D-L-E-R.com. That's a technology platform. In about 300 charitable organizations in the United, uh, United States and um, NGOs around the world are using us. And that's how it looks. And it all started with a great pilot that we had in Nepal. There was an earthquake in Kathmandu. And um, a local rice was available, but a lot of free rice was brought into the area. And the local merchants were really worried that they won't be able to sell, uh, sell that rice that they had in stock. And when um, this is the particular list that you see the copy of, uh, we were able to sell all the rice around Kathmandu. Um, you here in US were able to come to our platform and donate, purchase the rice for victims of the earthquake, and the rice was locally sourced. So these products that you see photos of were from local merchants. Um, the campaign was so successful that we got uh, a lot of accolades. We were invited to, we were one of the winners, um, and we were um, invited to present our technology at the World Humanitarian Summit in Turkey in 2016. It's by invitation only. We're at their marketplace showcasing our technology next to uh, Google and Microsoft and their technologies. But once we were decided to scale, we could not scale because local, we found that local resources were not available. And the place that, for example, in Zambia, there, we work with 700 schools, and they need, um, they have 150,000 students, and they need at least 50,000 backpacks a year. Nobody knows where they can buy those backpacks locally, and uh, merchants that do sell those backpacks only maybe have two to 25 maybe in stock because the businesses are too small. So the schools do choose to get backpacks from uh, United um, Kingdom. So all the backpacks from UK and they are not doing nothing good for local economy. And so the Goodler is uh, decided that uh, we need to take um, approach, a little bit different approach. We don't want to just uh, connect UK backpacks with Zambian children. We want to make a difference in those communities. And we, that's why we started Goodler Foundation. Goodler Foundation, this is an educational foundation. And this is, by the way, the photos how the local merchants were delivering, delivering rice. And so what we have, uh, Goodler Foundation, Educational Foundation, and the goal is to um, teach businesses how to cover their own needs, the needs in their own communities. And we work with um, local businesses, and we also work through universities, um, provide teaching professors how to teach their subjects in such a way that uh, students will, once they graduate, they will be job creators, not job seekers. And this is the path that everybody's trying to get on right now. There are not enough jobs available, even in US, but much more in um, third world countries. It is very difficult to say right now what is actually needed in local communities, and that's where Goodler and Goodler Foundation can um, make a difference. We identify local merchants, we identify local NGOs or local charities, and we continue to connect the two, but now we also have an educational piece to it that helps those local resources being, to be developed. What, as a result of our work, we were able to increase 
in increase in involvement of local NGOs. They are no longer looking at outside of their country for resources, but they're also looking inside of their country and trying to take a systemic approach and uh, understanding that that helps local economies to be to grow if they actually use local resources. We're also building local uh, economies by engaging local merchants and farmers. It is, um, it is, it was surprising to me that entrepreneurship movement has been there for a while now. There are a lot of startups that are being uh, built around the world. However, most of those startups are actually looking for outside markets to sell their products. And there will be this village of women. Um, somebody will come and say, "What can we do?" And they'll say, "Oh, we can do. We can make jam." Mind you, that jam is not needed in that local community, and they will rely on the customers who are outside of their community to sell that jam. And you know, in order for them to be able to sell that jam, they actually have to go through a pretty rigorous uh, process of certifying their work and certifying that jam. Uh, instead, bread is really needed in the community, and it's been, uh, you know, bakeries are so far away that it, they only bring bread like once a week. So a goal of Goodler Foundation is to connect the needs with resources and ask, they have them talk to each other. So instead of creating a jam and not having your first customers, and even if you do find your first customers and it's outside of the area, um, what if that country is no longer willing to support yours due to the political reasons, and now you have no customers at all, and nobody needs a jam in your own community. Uh, so that's what the Goodler and Goodler Foundation work. We don't do it alone. We have multiple, multiple, multiple partners. We work, we believe that collaboration is actually new competition. And we work with multiple agencies around the world, and that's how we are able to create uh, best practices. And we work with multiple professors around the world at different colleges. We take the methodologies that uh, they are trying to develop. This is mostly for the books that are not written yet, and we test them on our programs around the world. A couple of those programs are Goodler Social Innovation Youth Incubator. Uh, incubator, it's a three month, six month, or 12 month program. Some of you were, were part of that program, and some of um, you actually gonna hear from the panelists a little bit later today that who, gonna, who were involved in our programs, and they will talk about their experiences. Um, we teach social innovation and social entrepreneurship, and it's basically a step-by-step -step guide on how to, how to start social change. And no matter what kind of format your social change will take, it could be uh, non-profit and it could be for-profit, uh, we will guide you through the process. And to get more information about it, you can go to goodler.org now. That's a non-profit organization. We also have a leadership cohort, which is it's a selected group of youth that has leadership experiences that goes to us to different, uh, that goes through the training. And it's a one year program. You have a one year commitment. And we, those youth, youth that are interested, we take them to the United Nations with us. They participate in different events. We take them to actually to different places. We also offer leadership development like type of executive education type of programs for youth from around the world. We just finished the four day intensive course with four young people uh, from Kazakhstan. Um, we actually have somebody in the audience who was part of that, um, that program. And, um, but our main goal is uh, throughout, throughout our programs is to connect your small initiatives to sustainable development goals. But that's all we do. We connect you. We basically call it uh, zooming in and zooming out. You know, you are zooming in and doing a project inside of your community, but then to give you a perspective and give you a vision, you have to zoom out and see where the world is going. But in one of our groups, we had a, um, a teenagers who were working on bringing women to the water in one of the village. They were creating this bus 
um, that could will take would be very efficient, will be very comfortable, bring um, women every morning to the water. And but if you look at one of the water initiatives here, uh, the whole world is actually trying to bring water to the women. And uh, so I said, okay, so if you find your solution, it might take you two years to implement it, but by that time, that village will already have water because the whole world is going, is working on bringing water to the women, bringing water into the villages and not women to the water. So that's why we focus on that. And um, uh, we just wanted to see you together with you. We're really happy that you are with us here today because we would like to see a brighter future. And uh, we do have um, um, Mr. Rehenthal here. He'll be talking about that bright future. But let's just use uh, smart philanthropy and not to have two movements, your business where you're working and making money and then you have a nonprofits that you go and volunteer. You can actually can combine the two. You can create projects, nonprofit organizations that have money, uh, ge uh, revenue generating activities. You also should be able to create a business that has a very, very deep um, a social impact and uh, Goodler and I, me personally, I'm here to, to guide you through the process. You can contact me, learn more. I am excited uh, because we have a, such a great program and you will learn a ton. Thank you.